Jay Rosen, the renowned blogger and journalism professor, is a distinguished thinker about citizen journalism. His concepts about user participation have changed how American newsrooms approach their audiences. With his students at NYU, Rosen develops new ideas for the future of journalism. Well, you can't force people to participate. If people aren't on the net, you can't force them onto the net. I think what you have to do is make it as easy as possible for people to participate. That's important. To try and lower the barriers to participation is very important. But you should never expect that most people or a representative group of people are going to participate. That's just not how these projects work. Well, I think born on the web news sites are different than those that have transitioned from a prior platform. And what we're seeing is that more of the born on the web news sites are um, seeking to hire professional journalists to combine with the aggregation they already do and with the blogging and citizen journalism they already do. So what I see is those things com sort of combining while the old media properties that have transitioned to the web are becoming more like the born on the web sites. So to take a simple example, all newspapers are engaged in blogging. Um, they all solicit um, comments. They, the smarter ones understand that user engagement, engaging with the users, is a really important thing that they have to learn how to do. They are beginning to um, hire um, community managers, people who can help create a community of users at the site. Um, they are getting smarter about technology at the same time. So I think some of the differences that we have been used to between old and new media are eroding. Uh, they're becoming less clear, and that's probably a good thing. There's been a power shift, for one thing, which means that the people formerly known as the audience have in their possession most of the tools for doing media that were previously the monopoly of big media companies. So that's a major change. At the same time, professional journalists have learned to adapt to new tools that are changing their work. Just today, for example, Brian Stelter, who is a young reporter for the New York Times, put on his Twitter feed that the blog post that he just wrote about Good Morning America, which is a popular television show, was just the first draft of a story that he's doing for the paper. So please comment and annotate it because I'm trying to write a really good story. <laughs> well, that way of working is completely different than the way New York Times reporters did their work just five years ago. And it is an example of shifting power, shifting attitudes, and adaptation by professional journalism. Well, um, to look at the very big picture, um, the whole idea of the press as an important part of democracy started with a different idea, a related idea, which is that the people outside of power should be included in discussions about what the government should do. And that basic idea is as true now as it was in the 18th century when it came to light. And so in that sense, we 
still need journalism as much as we ever did. What's different is that the tools for participating in the act of doing journalism have been distributed to the same public that requires it in the first place. And so the whole economy of the press is changing along with the technology of the press. But that doesn't change at all the original reason why we needed the press in the first place. Well, a lot of those people have left or they've been driven out. Um, many of them have been simply left behind. Uh, and the people who are pushing forward are the ones who are able to adapt. Uh, and it's unclear if a lot of um, local newspapers will be able to make this transition. Many of them perhaps won't. Um, but that's all right. That's part of history. <laughs> Uh, but the smarter journalists at the more evolved news organizations are realizing that the web is not just another delivery system and that it does require a lot of changes in how they work. And that's why I use the word adaptation. Um, the resistance phase is over. There's still a need for journalism because the press um, tells us what's happening in a world we can't observe ourselves. And there's still a demand for good journalism, which we see every day on the web. Um, journalism school faces a lot of big challenges and it has to adapt in a major way to what's going on. Here at NYU, I've created a new program called Studio 20, which um, is based on the idea that um, innovation in web journalism won't just come by itself, and that we can teach students by sort of pushing them directly into the problems of how to innovate on the web. And um, the premise of this program is not that here are all the skills you need to learn and come to NYU and we'll give them to you and you'll get a ticket saying you're a professional journalist when you leave. That is not even possible anymore. Instead, our proposition is come to NYU and work on some really cool projects with media partners that help innovate in web journalism and from that experience, you will launch your career as a journalist. So that's how we're trying to adapt journalism school to this environment. Well, first of all, um, it's never been required to go to journalism school. But the reason why you might is that extremely high standards and um, the discipline of verifying what you're reporting do not actually come naturally or easily to people, even when they have the tools to report. And this is what can separate um, casual users of the web from more serious users. On top of that, the reason young people should go to journalism school is uh, pretty simple. We need them to help us reinvent the press because if they don't, and we can't get new ideas and um, a fresh perspective, it's very possible that the press itself could fall apart. Mm -hmm.